Hello, everybody, and how are we doing tonight? We're uh, here for some Eberron Chapter 5. I'll explain that in a second. Mm. Depth of Culture Session... What session is this? Five? Oh, fuck. I think I named it wrong on the stream, it's actually. Five. It's episode seven on the... It's five, because you... I know why. It's because I confuse it with Witcher. Episode five. I confuse okay. it with Witcher, that's why. Scott, there is, there is a function in your dashboard called activity. Oh, I know. I don't go there. Roll though. down to last week and check what I, week you I don't on. go to activities, though. But do, so you don't fuck up. I don't, even go, I don't even go to the Twitch website. What? How do you... No, exactly. Man. I thought you were on the Twitch website. But I can see chat. Hi, Plex. Hi, Slashes. Um, Don't stop. So, how's everybody doing? Good? Good? Yeah. I'm excited. Sorry about the late, little extra late start and the slight distractedness. My whole setup is very different. You have to understand, everybody, that when I play D&D, uh, usually I have to see faces that are like literally like this big, like the size of my eyeball is the, set, the faces and then it's like a distance away. But now I can actually see all these gorgeous locks of grease and everybody else as well. It's not, it's not grease, it's just unkept. That's, that's the word that. So anyways, last session. I'm in character. Oh, that, there we go. That makes sense. So last session, uh, what ended up happening was uh, we had, uh, what's his face there? Um, so what's his face? We had the whole party uh, heading back towards Sharn. Uh, we actually picked it up uh, a huge uh, gap away from where it was that it was left off the, the session prior. Um, the reason being, you know, you guys left the, the island, you're heading to Sharn. All the in-between stuff was not as super a level, important. As like a level eight party sailing, you know. Oh, what, what is going to be attacked by some birds? Like, oh no. Come on. So, so you make your way almost all the way back to Sharn. You don't go visit your uncle or anything like that, Aaron. And you do head all the way back there. Uh, all the way back, you have a new way through the Sahagan Pass. Now, I do have to point out that the ships, uh, there were two ships heading in that direction. One of them that had most of the crew, including Rock, the most important crew member. And one of them that had um, uh, like N and you know, the, the second tier people. There was N, there was Reich, uh, there was that um, uh, name who I always forget marked um uh storm person you know the tier b people and they were on the ship behind you uh you guys went through this hogged pass and then going through there there was a bit of a fight and you won let's just put it that way you won the fight and <laughs> and you continued your way through to sharn uh when you guys oh, i did have a question um i believe that Zahog and shaman had like a cool trident or something did we get that well you guys just kind of uh, what happened was after you went fucking crazy yeah. Um, your crew just started sailing. I, mm -hmm. I specifically said they just like, we're going to keep going. Because <laughs> like killing Sahagin, they had no qualms with whatsoever. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are probably like, sweet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sahagin are awful. They make everybody's life difficult, especially our house. Da -da -da. Kill Sahagin. And then Kieran just went ballistic. And they were like, move along. <laughs> move along. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyways, uh, the site that, that happened there actually did push them on, and so you guys ended up not looting that place. But theoretically, you could loot it if you went back. Um, uh, what Reich would have seen as he passed through, because he would have just seen like lightning being called from the sky, because he was a good, good distance away. He would have seen like light, uh, lightning get called from the sky and just like uh, a battle happening up ahead. But as he approached, the battle would have already ended, and he would have just seen bodies everywhere been like okay well it looks like they took care of business so when you guys got to sharn um the uh, party member that was with you a dwarf by the name of Dalness. Dalness uh said more or less i've always i've worked on my room for a while now and uh he's a crazy bitch so i'm uh, i'm out <laughs> and i specifically mostly the said, second bitch he said nothing he yes. left without a word actually which is much more poignant and important <laughs> and so Just he walked bag over the, the shoulder and walk off the ship and uh, Bellum also left, uh, though he didn't really say much. He just kind of was like, I'm outie. And so he left behind. But he did specifically leave behind him the room that would have been Reich's prior. He did leave behind a, uh, a note for Reich, um, which when Reich's ship pulls up near where uh, Kieran's ship docks, it's not like they're side by side. It's not like there's like, oh, there you poo two, we can parallel park next to each other. There's a distance apart. But when Reich gets off the ship that he was traveling on in Sharn, he can make his way over to, to the Bowl of the Sea, so to Kieran's boat. And... Um, and actually uh, go down to his room 
and find the letter that's there. So, Reich, when you do see the letter, like, where's Bellum? Oh, he left. Oh, Bellum left? Oh. Uh, and you find the letter. I actually have it written right here for you. It says... That's a, that's my whole reaction to Bellum left. <laughs> so, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, honestly, I don't even know if you would know first walking in because everybody would be doing things. So I imagine like you would kind of come up. Well, aboard. the first thing I would do before I went down to my room is I'd go up to Kieran and be like, hey, what happened? I saw the 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 combat. Is everyone OK? No, everyone's not OK. But what okay. else is new? Would you care to elaborate? No, I mean, we killed the Sahagan. We lost people in the process. We're in charge now. What else do you want to know? Who was lost? Stalbor list of the name. <laughs> yeah. The problem they, they were fallen and elves, yeah. and Kieran didn't learn. Was there anyone that I care about? Uh, no, uh, they were fallen and elves. Actually, one of the right. people that you one of the people that you lost actually was. My apologies. I just realized that Aaron was uh, re referencing. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the people that you guys actually lost was um, Mia. What? Oh no! Yeah. We could have screwed you off. Just, so, just kill her off off camera. I don't know who, don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> it was very much on camera. It was it was during that. The... It was on camera, but she wasn't given a name in yeah. the moment. I just well, I just sit there staring gormlessly at you, like oh. Did Anastasia at least die? Oh no, absolutely not. Anastasia <laughs> actually was probably one of the people that helped to keep the ship. She was on the other ship actually. She was with Reich. Since some oh, cutesy man, I'm, like. I'm sorry for whoever Patreon created her. She's, <laughs> she's definitely a core member of the crew <laughs> that has very much been relevant. I love the fact. Way. I love the fact that you guys are just like we're going to avoid any conversation with her. We're just going to be like we're, we're we're sailing. You have to tell us of anything. In, like, of course, we're talking to our fucking crew. You, you guys were on the same uh, on the same island as her for a very long period of time, of course. And then we just kind of but, flash forward. You know, you're not tell us if anything important happens. Me and yeah. Stacia are best boys now. Um, hey, hey, what's hey, your all, name? Stacia. That's <laughs> a, my nickname. I could swear. She calls Ooh. me. Calls me Reich because there's no shortening Reich. Sure, there is no shortening Reich. <laughs> All right, so oh. Bull of the Sea. I finally have it loaded up. There we go. That took me ages to find Bowl it. Of the sea. So with the Bull of the Sea, yeah. Uh, so Mia had died. Um, uh, the rest of your core crew actually stayed alive, and a bunch of other unnamed ones. But yeah, Anastasia is definitely still alive. So go ahead, continue with your RP. I'm sorry. So I mean, she's obviously kind of dodging all my questions. I look around and I say, "Where's, where's Bellum?" I don't know. He walked off. Went off to Sean to find out the answers he needed. Okay. Well, it seems that you are in no mood to speak. So, I give him just like a pointed look. So I guess I'll go uh, go down to my room and then into Sean. When are you heading uh, heading out to Sean? You tell us, right? I'm I'm here with you. Right, give me a moment to go and collect my things, then we can go. Then I will go down to my bedroom. Okay. So we'll give direction for that in a moment. But first, it's, uh, you go down to your room, and there you had some of your supplies that you didn't need with you on the other ship, uh, as well as some of the more prized items, like a lot of the artifacts, of the, the Dakani artifacts you had on the other ship as part of the hole over there. Um, some of it was over here, because there was a considerable amount of it, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, your more prized stuff, like even personal uh, effects, you would have left here because it's better guarded under Kieran's chaos. As crazy as it sounds. So uh, you do, of course, find a an envelope. I mean, the thing is old. You know, it's it's not that it's a low, uh, it's a poor quality envelope. It really is uh, high quality paper. Clearly came from House uh, Civis, so on and so forth. But you do find the envelope, and it does have the, a mark put onto it. Not a dragon mark. That's obnoxious. Sorry, not a house uh, seal. But it actually has um, the torn uh, symbol on it, the mark of his clan, Bellum's clan. And it, it, it has, like, clearly your name written on the front, uh, your full name. When you open it up to read it, it says, Dear Reich, I regret to inform you that I must leave. It took every fiber of my being not to kill Kieran as a, uh, uh, as a hog in pass. Uh, whilst retreating, she found it necessary to not only continue killing them, but to go on a rampage of murder. I couldn't handle it. I tried to stop her, but she wasn't having it. Uh, she ran herself mad and, cha uh, and chaotic beyond belief. The only reason why I didn't kill her, because you obviously, the only reason why I didn't kill her is because of the cause she is fighting is a great one, and I don't want, and, and, and I don't see 
it being a successful one unless she is alive. But I cannot stand around uh, her. I can't stand being around her any longer. I'm personally going to take care of the gnolls in uh, Droam. Uh, I know that this isn't a cause you care much about, but it's something I deem as ellipses important. Uh, I I will also be speaking with my house to inform them of what may be coming, whilst trying to recommend them to join the cause. I will miss Stalbor, Nico, and yourself very much. Uh, I was there to keep an eye on Kieran, but friendships I developed uh, with you lot are true. Please try and be Kieran's voice of reason, uh, because without it, I fear she will do more damage than good for this cause. <laughs> the next time I see you, it may very well be on the battlefield, depending on how this war rages on. Until then, Bell and Torn. Uh, did we get a count of how many times Kieran's name was said? I don't know, but that's more words than Bell has said in this entire campaign, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I breathe and reread the note. And think to myself for a little bit, then just I, I store the note in the bag, sling it over my shoulder, and then head back, uh, uh, head back out to um, uh, to meet up with um, who actually is coming with me. Is it just going to be uh, one second? So you, you're saying you're heading back out. So obviously, you guys are coming to Sharn for uh, a purpose. You had um, spent your time on the island. You had recovered the various artifacts that you you had along the way, um, with the intention of of learning more about them. And so we kind of have to take a step back. It's one of the things I would have taken care of last session, but uh, you weren't here. So um, uh, so with the various artifacts that you gained along the way. So one of the reasons why you came to Sharn is not only is it a friendly port in general for you guys, but it's also where Morgrave University has its uh, its big house. It's where it's actually based out of, it's where the actual university is, as opposed to small little branches off to the side that kind of pull from the research here, like the, the field offices. And Morgrave University is one of the best places to find information about Dargunian um, uh, artifacts. So you came here to bring the artifacts to them to find out what information you could off of them. Okay, and so there was a bit of interest from Stalbor specifically about this, and I'll get to that in a second. As for anybody else, Kieran and otherwise, that's up to uh, up to them. Um, but there's other reasons to be in Sharn too. For instance, last time you were here, a, a point in time of significance. Actually, last time you were here too, you popped by the embassy, the Dargun embassy, to see how things were going, and things were actually uh, going very well. And I believe actually your sister was the one that was moving in to take over as a as one of the uh, aristocrats that are, or the, the you know talkers ambassadors ambassadors thank you uh, that were supposed to be at that em uh, embassy yeah, embassy ambassador huh? um, one of the amb uh, ambassadors at that embassy um, but more than that too you guys actually have a history here you have places that you've enjoyed going to in the past you have that same bar that you've always visited you have um, the uh, what's her name Mika you know, your friendly halfling that you've met along the way. Like, there's tons of things here that you actually have. Like, hey, we're passing through. Let's actually see our friends before we maybe go die. Um, or at least, you know, get, a, get get that shitty old beer that we used to always drink and absolutely hated. But, you know, we're rich now. Why not try it again? <laughs> um, so so uh, before we take another step forward, we have to continue with that step backwards. Stalbor had done a considerable amount of research into... Uh, the the items that you had found along the way. And the items themselves were not insignificant. However, uh, they are actually kept on my um, database of information on my Apple products. And my current other computer is not lit up. So light up for me, please. And my cell phone's not on me. I charge, I'm charging it. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. So, uh, of the items that you found... I to get prepared before the streams a little bit. I was preparing this computer, which is all new and different for me. Oh, you fancy curve, uh, curve monitors. I'm gonna get I my like cell phone. I, I hope Scott's next character in my shows is like I'm, I'm, wow. I want that. Well, since since he's he walked away, we can take a moment because I wanted to have know. some RP with uh, Stalbor, anyways. Mm. Sure. So Stalbor is like literally like getting ready to go into the city, but he doesn't seem that excited about it. Uh, I, I kind of walk up to him and I say. So what happened with Sahag in the Sahagan Pass? And I hand him the the letter. He's he's a bit confused, but he takes it and uh, opens up and starts reading uh, while talking because he can do that because he's smart. Says, "You wicked spat." Kieran got angry, and she destroyed every single one of those 
fateless creatures. I can understand if Belen is... Oh, yeah, he's upset about it. Ultimately, I think Belen is confused. He might think Sahagion are people. Well, it's unfortunate. We could have used his strength, but this next step is going to take a different sort of strength. One I do not think that Belen possessed. Unfortunate, but... If he is set on heading to Dryam, then I will need to reshape our plans. But while we're here, the university will at least give us things to do. If all goes well, then our next step may be to, uh, may, um, may be to Dargun. Right. If you are a member of a bloodline, send it to be Emperor. And you can unite Dargun. Do you think they could be in use in our quest to stop what the houses are doing? I'm fairly sure your people have no love for the houses. My people have known nothing but war for most of our existence. If there's a battle coming, then you'll want hobgoblins in, uh, in support. And I can tell you that they ho we hold no no love nor I even care for the houses though i do think that with some convincing i it, with some convincing and with a man uh, 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 a mantle uh, uh, with a proper mantle on my shoulders i think i may be able to galvanize them to conflict but more importantly if I have, if I get what I want, I can let, I can get the ear of all the other rulers of the uh, of this land, and though they currently live peacefully with the houses, I think with a little coaxing, we could take some of the ire they have towards each other and point it squarely at the houses. It was not so long ago that there was a, a war between the nations and the, and the houses. Uh, there was the, there was conflict between the two. I'm sure it could be expressed again. Well then, Reich, we made a better plan in two minutes than we made in eight months. <laughs> well, that's why I've been seeking this for some time now. I knew that we were attempting to take down an enemy with means beyond our grasp, and we needed better means. You know me, I would wait 400 years if I had to. Unfortunately, I would not be able to do that. <laughs> well, I have some theories. <laughs> dot, dot, if, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> if it turns me into anything like, uh, like what I've borne witness to you creating in the past, I, I don't think I'm interested. I, I can imagine, like, like starts walking off the boat, just like teasing. Be like, "Come on, <laughs> don't you want your heart to stop beating?" Like, just friendly necromancer teasing. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, whenever he's ready, uh, we can head in. But Scott, let's uh, let's talk. Let's talk some shop. Let's okay. talk relics. Um, so you, uh, uh, what it is that you had found along the way. So there, like I said, there are a ton of different, um, uh, artifacts that are found, uh, down there. Uh, many of them were things like, um, uh, types of vases of, uh, great history. Not like, oh, this is just a random vase with gold on it. It's like, no, it's actually something that, uh, of con considerable significance if it was locked inside of a vault like that. Some of the items are, uh, old weapons, uh, but actually more important than the weapons themselves, which are, uh, crafted very well. It's as it stands today in, um, in Eberron, um, the hobgoblins from the days of yore were still the best race at bending metal. They were the best race at forging steel and iron and uh, uh, mithril and um, uh, adamantine. 
no race has, has matched them. Just like as it stands right now, no race has been able to touch magics the way giants have been able to in the past. So um, it's just one of those forgotten lures. One of the interesting things that you actually found down there as well was plants for like how to make different types of weapons and whatnot. So it's again, stuff that in your hands doesn't really have much value. You're no crafter and it would take you, starting at your early life, uh, your entire life until now, which is actually like 20 years, um, to barely even start to learn uh, the craft to do this. And that's even if you're up for the task, your character's kind of not built that way. You know what I mean? Um, but in other hands, this could be invaluable, right? Moving on. But the items that really caught Stallbor's uh, attention, you know, the ones that actually have magical significance to them and not just monetary value or, or um, uh, like societal significance, right? Um, were a handful of different items. So one of the first ones was obviously, uh, three of the first ones were obviously the sword and the armor. So what Stalbor was able to discover with the sword um, after, I mean, you guys actually did this yourselves and the door to assist you with this beforehand, was that the sword is adamantine. Now, adamantine is a metal that is not easily enchanted. Um, and so this metal is not enchanted, but that doesn't really matter. An adamantine crafted sword is already in and of itself something of great significance. It's important to note that adamantine weapons overcome all damage reduction, just overcome all damage reduction. They're treated as magical, but they can actually take one step beyond, So, uh, or damage resistance. So adamantine weapons actually can easily cut through almost anything. You'll be very hard pressed to find something that says otherwise, okay? Um, secondly, was the armor. Now, one of the things that caught uh, unique to, to Ollie was that the armor was uh, non-magical. He actually, uh, his initial studies of it, and I said this beforehand, was the armor was not magical at all. Um, is very light for its design and so on and so forth, which strangely enough is not made out of mithril. It's actually not made out of mithril. It's actually made out of uh, very well crafted steel, but is extremely light in its um, in its feel and, uh, and whatnot. But after spending some time uh, with the with this very well crafted like full plate armor. Um, all he was able to like continue doing his research again, he's wicked smart. He was going to be able to continue doing his research and realize that even when he put spell effects on it, he couldn't detect any magic off of it. And that led him to realize, oh, it's not necessarily that this isn't magical. It's that magic can't be detected on it. And I lack the means, unless Ollie tells me something in his spell list I don't know about, to pierce through uh, that gaze. And so he can clearly tell it. not to go through it yeah 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 oh there you go so that's actually so that's another... why it, that's why it would be relevant yeah it's one of those like ha huh, i learned this yeah. i wonder if they learned this here so um and then you actually would uh another thing was uh, very strange it's a horn there's actually a horn like a that is it's three feet in length like it's a large horn that weighs about 14 15 pounds it is a massive horn oh like drill me an arcana check please is it advantage considering we've been traveling for like four months? Um, yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're fine. You spend a lot of time research, <laughs> detect magics and all that shit. Um, so this horn he was able to identify is the horn of a dragon. Um, with his 28, more important than that, he's actually able to identify this is the horn of a red dragon. Like literally like the horn that comes off of their head of a red dragon that you can actually use like... <laughs> to blow into. Uh, he's, of course, used to uh, identify on this because he has that as a um, as a, uh, a spell in his list. So uh, with his identification, he's actually able to discern that the magics of this horn, it's supposed to be... It, it's said that when this horn is blown by those who... Uh, by, when the horn is blown by royal lips, that the heroes of, uh, of the Dakani will come to aid. You know what I mean? It's very much like a, a horn of um, Gondor sort of a situation. Be honored dead. But the uh, they they will come to uh, to your aid. Um, but honestly, the name of the horn, uh, where it is that came from, uh, what that cryptic message means, all that stuff, he wasn't able to discern. That's what he the kind of like magic. Is well, that. it's one of those things that would be handed to Reich with. When things are really bad, blow the horn. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then lastly, the other uh, magical item of significance was actually a banner. It's it's old. The banner is rather old. And um, does anybody have mending or make holes? Yes. Like that? Okay. I've had mending for ages, but it never comes up aside from the fact that I'm constantly fixing the ship. So he would be using mending to uh, to to kind of like work away the age off of this thing. But this is an old banner, which once again, his magics were able to, to pierce through, identify, to see that this is something called the Banner of the Storm's Eye. Now, this has nothing to do with Kieran. Okay, calm down. It's there are the, many storms. It's a Banner of the Storm's Eye. It actually has uh, an old sigil of the uh, of a Dakani family. And when you actually look at it, Reich, you can see it's the same sigil that existed on the helm when you had looked at it beforehand inside his family so theoretically it'd be one of your family and actually as i said beforehand when you looked at that it is actually the same almost the same exact sigil that your family uses today you just have a slightly bastardized version of uh what the sigil is and um this banner when it's waved in a battlefield it actually invokes um uh courage to those around it and staves away uh fear or doubt um uh to those in the battlefield okay so those are the items of magical significance. Everything else just has actual like uh, societal significance or wealth to it, right? And you want to bring these things to more grave university to get them investigated. Um, is that the first place that you guys want to go at? Or after a long, long trek at sea, you kind of want to spend a minute and relax? Uh, Stalbor would probably suggest go to the university, but after a couple of moments actually on ground, probably suggest going to a bar it's one of those things where stepping on grounds for everybody but kieran is still unusual kieran just like steps off and everybody else is like i would recommend going to morgrave university first just so we can get rid of all the stuff we have to carry well, it's in multi it's in multi-dimensional pouches oh yeah yeah so it, also you you imagine that it wouldn't just be like you're not just like carrying it on your shoulder there you would just pay yeah to be transported to the location. You're just not going to be able to use House Lerendar to do it. I would uh, I would still, just because my yeah, my character is way too interested in this stuff, I want the, them to start researching right away. So I'd say, let's, let's, go, uh, let's go get this taken care of and then we can go drink. So we should probably travel together at all times because last time we were here, Stalbor almost died and we have a lot more enemies now. <laughs> I'm not against yeah, that. Funny. Um, and the rest of the crew, they can come or stay on the ship as they please. I'm going to ask if Ed will keep an eye on the ship, since we can communicate back and forth. Yep, yeah, actually. It, it would be smart to just be the three of us traveling around the city. Um, Ed would a, a quick little RP with Ed, because it's been a long mm -hmm. time. So when you see Ed, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just kind of will say to you, kind of like well, as you guys are preparing your things and some of the stuff's being loaded mm -hmm. off of the ship, because you obviously would have brought stuff on your way here. Why the fuck wouldn't you? You're preparing for a war. You know that the princes were sending you with some stuff to bring this way. So um, so as stuff's starting to be loaded off the ship and everything, and we kind of be mm -hmm. le leaning on the railing and look over at you and just be like, what's the plan, Captain? Well... We get what we came for, and then we leave. As quickly as humanly possible. Really? Barbarian. Really possible. Yeah, why? Uh, turns and, like, elbows resting on, because it's that typical, simple, uh, almost forgettable-looking female form that um, mm -hmm. she usually takes. Um, elbows on the deck and uh, hands resting in the fists. It says, <sighs> I actually miss it. Sharn? Spend that much time in the the quiet of the sea, the bustling noise, the you know fights here and there, uh, the occasional you know plates that falls off of one of the ledges, uh, the mages with their spells, uh, the the rowdy singing, the protests, uh, all the stuff that happens in this ridiculous city. You miss it. I get that. If I had to live on the land, it would be Sharn. But it's not safe. Agreed. So, so you guys, I overheard your conversation. You're heading over to the university? Yeah. Captain, wasn't it the university that had sent those people after you? Yeah. Were they sent directly at you, or were they... I, I honestly can't remember the circumstance. Uh, no, they were. We were at the same goal. Gotcha. And then we murdered all of them, so... 
th they got away for some time after you initially uh, engaged with them. Uh, did they ever get a chance to send word back to the university about who it was they engaged with? I don't know, but I assume Stalbor has a plan. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's fair, he says, looking over at Stalbor, <laughs> who's probably just like staring at a building. Uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of crooked and like, I wonder how they put those struts up there to hold that up. <laughs> Incredibly smart man looking incredibly stupid. I also might antagonize House Cannon a bit while we're here. We'll see. I'll think so. Um, Captain, you know who in House Cannon controls this region? A little bit. Maybe They that's... do owe me quite a bit of money. Merricks? Not Merricks, but someone who works under him in the house, I imagine. We made a deal a while back for repairs and ship. I don't want them actually on the ship, but I will take... Sounds equivalent. Uh, just trying to make sure I get things uh, correct here because it was real like many months ago. You yeah. did in fact no, make been, that deal. It's been like years. <laughs> you, you, uh, you you did in fact make that deal and it's 100% uh -huh. legit and your character mm -hmm. totally has the, the right to call for that. Yep. However, it was the house that focuses on the crafting of magical items, which if I remember correctly is Kenneth North. No, I worked with Canna self. I threatened to go to Canna North if they didn't work with me. I said I will go to your competitor, essentially. Okay. And strong armed them into a deal in Sharn. I also got to imagine there's got to be a little bit of all of them in Sharn, right? Because I'm just trying to make sure I get this no. correct. No. Canna South is, really? is Merrick's? Uh, it's Merrick's. No, no, no. It's, it, they were talking like hard competitive lines within the house. So Canna mm -hmm. South is Merrick's, which focuses on like Warforged and stuff like that. Canna yeah. North focuses on the creation of magic items in Canna East. No. K so Kenneth West focuses West, on um, West. yep. Kenneth West focuses on wondrous items like wands and stuff like that and wondrous creations. East focuses on war machines and siege engines. So war machines, siege engines, the other one. Yep, cool. South does war forts. So they all do magic items though and yeah, stuff. There, there is no north. The uh, the Karnath is east. That's the it's even though it's you know, it's like east. Um, that's the I don't war know one. who specifically works on it. It's not specifically, but that's the one that Karnath has his best relationship with. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, cool. So it was South that was over there that was doing the proceedings. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure I, I parsed through it in my head. Yeah, awesome. we've never been to House Canada's like headquarters in the North. We never went there. Nope, 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 nope. So, um, uh, so anyways, you make this, uh, you say this thing and, and he's just kind of like, she, she just kind of like shrugs and says, <laughs> just be careful, Captain. You know that you're going to go in there and run your mouth and it's probably I gonna... am always careful. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry. Are you guys bringing this stuff to Morgrave yourself? Um, not at the moment. We're going to leave it here for now. I think that's for the best. Okay. Well, um, best of luck to you. And I'll kind of like tap the stone, like, first sign of trouble. Um, uh, you, you say first sign of trouble and you hear like a crashing of, uh, of like crates and stuff like that off to the side. Okay, sign of trouble. And, and, and when you look over, you see uh, Rock was trying to carry a, a crate, but then he tripped over a crate into a few more crates, and like, and like Rock, no, you've got to lift with your back, not with your knees. Rock goes oh, and goes over and starts like trying to push them backwards with his back, like trying to like actually like lift them with his back. I've never met Rock, so Keep an eye this would be my Rock first. <laughs> this would be my first time interacting with him. I imagine your character was downstairs. Sorry, maybe even stepped off the ship. But please, if you want to be on it, like kind of like <laughs> looking over and be like, "What do you do?" So, uh, so this is Rock. I would say that I would say to uh, Stalbor. Yes, this is Rock. Rock, this is Reich. Your uh, names are very Rock. similar. Yes. Oh, Rock, you've you've forgotten words since the last time. <laughs> no. Rock. Rock. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> wow. He is somehow exactly as dumb as you described. Wow, don't say that. Don't say that in front of him. That's really rude. Why would I lie to him? Rock Why? seems like a very strong dwarf. He's a dwarf. Yes, I, I know that, but I, I don't really want to call him a dwarf. It seems offensive. He's literally a dwarf. Rock. Dwarf, rock. No, I mean, like, it's offensive to all other dwarves. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <a> <laughs> he 
He sits there thinking for a few seconds. He doesn't get it. He starts trying to pick up a crate again, but he does it the correct way this time and starts walking off with the crate uh, down the ramp. Hey, he's got it. I'll give like like a shove in the shoulder. What? <laughs> you, I don't know what you expect from me. <laughs> this is why you don't have children. <laughs> I don't have, you know what? Let's not get into this. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, I, I as well. think now I do need a drink. No, right, we're going to the university. No, no, no. no. Oh, Riding so away. <laughs> so you guys heading to the university? You're heading to get the drink now? University. University. Okay, so you guys head to the university first. And How far away is the university from here? Not far enough. Yeah, actually, pretty far. So university. Because uh, I would, I would chart, I would get like a, a lift. Like a chariot thing. Oh, absolutely, you have to. So, yeah. uh, so the university is way up. I just say I'd like pay for it because. Yeah, I pull out my my cell phone to get get an Uber. So one of the things that happens as you guys come walking off of the actual ship and into the docking area and whatnot and have to pass through this region is uh, because of the fact that the ship is just pulled in here and they're checking people is coming in and out. And it's not like they check every single solitary paper of everybody that comes in and out, but. You're the first people coming off your ship that isn't just unloading things. So the dock master, or at least one of the uh, undermasters, um, heads over in your direction and is like, um, uh, Excuse me there, come this way. Uh, the captain? Hi. He's like, I, I, I assumed. And then mm -hmm. like almost like mindlessly gesturing. He's like, yeah. um, may I see the papers, please? Sure. I hand him any paperwork. Do I have any paperwork? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, the bowl of the sea is a legitimate uh, vessel that was given to you legally. And uh -huh. you guys, of course, have your traveling papers. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I think everybody has traveling papers, except for maybe Stalbor, who blew up. But I honestly think that... Oh, yeah, I, I don't have them, but it's easy to assume I would have reproduced them. them or it's something, yeah. Yeah, you would have reproduced them. There's been a lot of time and money involved. Of course. So, so, um, so, so you guys have your papers, and you present them to him, and he's looking them over, and he's like, um... Hold on one second. Something doesn't check out here. I'll, I'll be right back. And he, like, walks off with your papers. This is going to be unfortunate. In the first sign of trouble, I'm going invisible, just so you know. <laughs> you guys... Why did we not think about this? We should have had N take care of this. You guys stand there for, like, uh, <laughs> about two minutes or so with this funny little banter back and forth. I, I, I will let N know that we have paperwork issues. He's going to, like, wave to the ship and just, yeah. like, and you're like, <laughs> oh, that's exactly how it would be. Uh, and so, uh, Enz not leaving the ship. Enz totally standing there because you guys are in your own shit now. And so, um, and so he comes back a couple minutes later on and he says, all right, well, um, everything mostly checks out, but you are unfortunately going to, and he says this as he's handing one paper over to, um, uh, as he's handing one paper over to what's your name uh, Stalbor hands your papers everything checks out it's just a matter of making sure uh, you pay your appropriate docking fees he says handing one paper over to, to Reich um, and Kieran you don't usually have to pay docking fees it's one of those things that you, do, you just don't handle mm -hmm. fine okay he says, oh good um, it, it is of course going to be uh, you're staying for how long I don't know. Four days. And is this a mercantile visit? Um, I see a lot of stuff being unloaded from the vessel. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I totally imagine that we would have like loaded up on random like trinkets and things mm -hmm. to sell. Well, I also so imagine can run. Yeah, I also imagine it was things that they were sent over from the because like nobody else can pierce through the storm, so the yeah, exactly. should have brought stuff over from the the islands, being like, let's yeah. start preparing. Um, so, so anyways, and so you say, yeah, four days and yeah. And so he goes, well, that is going to be the 75 gold cost to make that happen. And he uh, goes and hands you back your mm -hmm. documentations. Fine. Yeah. And you head over. hand over the 75 gold or at least a writ, uh, Kondorak mm -hmm. writ to, to be able to do it. And he's like, yeah. well then, uh, thank you, uh, Captain Kieran and, uh, steps back out of your way. And it's like clear awkwardness. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uncomfortable. And you guys are, as you're walking past, uh, you can roll for me perception checks really quickly. Not you, Will, because you can just sit there and eat your watermelon. 
the will thing to do. When can we go back to the pirate missions where things aren't awful? Look, we like Sean. I don't like Sean so anymore. Reich's not the one that notices because Reich's probably got his mind on other things looking ahead. But the other two of you notice that there happens to be a uh, a member of House Lirindar uh, <laughs> off standing just outside the doorway of where it was he had walked into a couple of mo moments beforehand, watching after you as you guys are uh, watching, as you guys are walking. Okay. So 75 already... gold seems steep for mercantile missions. There's no way that someone would make a profit. Uh, make it, it's it... because we're no longer associated with Lirandar. You open up your uh, documentation that. and you can see. Yeah. I know. Excoriate. Yep. Is stamped. It's because we're no longer associated with Lirandar and the prices are more for us. It's designed to make people who aren't involved with the guild fall. Exactly. To which I will say, what the fuck do you want? To the Laird I remember looking at him. We are <laughs> leaving. Our business here has been concluded. I think we have somewhere to go. Let, let's let's go. Like literally grab and pull. <laughs> so, I'm grabbing her other arm. We're just dragging her away. <laughs> you say that and the person was standing there like, all prissy, but when you like turn, what the fuck do you want? They they, kind of, they shrink down a little bit, like a bit of their bluster. Kind of... Me, I'm sorry. You blew the wind from their sails. So yeah. um, uh, so so anyways, and you guys continue making your way forward. As Stalbor had said, you guys call for uh, a sky cart to come down. It is House Orion, and uh, when you guys come down, it hmm. you know it, I imagine you have to use a quality cart because you're actually bringing more supplies than just your extra dimensional space held items. So you have to get a quality size cart. Because of that, you have to use your uh, documentation. It's not like it's a shitty little one where you just toss a couple coin. And once it's one of those things where, as they see it, they look at uh, Kieran and the paperwork, and Kieran. And they just kind of like the whole ride with that person, the House of Ryan member, is <laughs> quiet, like very awkward. Because even though they're not House Lirandar, associating with excoriates mm -hmm. is something that's bad. Yeah, it's yeah. taboo. So in Elvish, like a conversation happened in like the back of the cart, and be like, it's very handy that they still work, are, are willing to accept the coin and do the work, but they're just very like judgy and scared about it. I mean, Orion never liked Lirandar anyway, so I don't know why they have a stick up their ass about it. I mean, it might be because you're a pirate, Captain. Am I really, though? <laughs> no, it might be nice if you guys learned the language I could join in with. He's uh, like, he I, says I, he's I, goblin. I, I speak yeah, back I, in Dwarven. I say nope. <laughs> I mean, I've, if you... Actually, I could probably buy a book on, on Goblin here. It would take me no time at all to learn. I don't speak Goblin. Yes, yeah, so it would take you a lot of time to learn, but I'm a brilliant genius. So did, did Kieran say, I don't speak Goblin, or I won't speak Goblin? I don't speak Goblin. So, uh, you guys make your way trip all the way up to the, 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 the skies. Like, we're talking the, the sky um, uh, part of the, the city. It's very high up there. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've described this all before, way back in Season 1. But again, the City of Towers is literally towers built on top of the ruins of towers built on top of the ruins of towers. They stretch impossibly high. The architecture would never work. It's literally impossible for this to function. The only reason why it does it works in its original foundation is because this area happens to be a manifestation zone that is always active to the um, uh, plane of air. Um, uh, the name escapes me at the moment, but the plane that is uh, tied with air uh, in Eberron. And then beyond that, as the towers get taller and taller and taller, and there happen to be collapses over the years, struts that specifically uh, feed off of the energies of the manifestation zone of that plane, um, and then repel the towers upwards, actually hold them so they're continuing to uh, be built upon, even though it should be impossible to do so. But still, occasionally, there's a mistake that's made and accidents happen, but that's very rare nowadays, because there's lots of, like, bureaucratic safeguards in place and, you know, uh, regulations, da 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 so anyways, um, you got above that city of towers, there happens to be a huge chunk of floating land that actually uh, floats uh, with towers atop that up above. Morgrave University, however, is not there. They happen to be in the top ring of towers pretty much immediately underneath where that is. And when you get to Morgrave University, it is not small by any stretch. As a matter of fact, the university itself happens to have um, uh, a decent rung down below, uh, an actual castle-sized sh shaped, sorry, uh, a castle-shaped uh, foundation to the towers that stretch above it. So they own an entire building and 
theoretically all of the towers that grow off of that building up into the skies. It is not a small uh, location at all. It is a, a place of, of deep learning, of thought, uh, and because it's a museum of, uh, of great wealth. But again, untouched wealth. Uh, museums are usually filled with uh, artifacts that were donated to them or that they bought off of uh, various people to put on display for educational purposes as opposed to amassing wealth for one's own uh, personal gain. You know, you know that the curators all do very well for themselves. So um, anyways, when you guys are making your way to the uh, to Morgrave University, um, you were told beforehand that you had a contact um, that was in the, the museum itself. Do you have written down, Eric, the contact? Um, somebody said, oh, I know somebody that's there. Uh, more, uh, the Morgrave University contact? I did not write that down. Okay. So give me one second. I was also literally going to bring up it's incredibly likely that Stalbor would at least know some minor players because when he was in Sean, he made potions. Yeah, those those are, would be very very minor people. I know they would be very very minor, but still <laughs> something. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, no. Well, the Stalbor looks recognizable anymore, really. No, Stalbor wouldn't necessarily be recognizable as well as a, a, a thousand other factors. So uh, give me one second. Um, Denton was your dead friend. Um, sorry to bring that up. Is it too yep. soon? Uh, Stalbor is upset about it. Fucking rip. And literally, was gonna was gonna come up probably. Um. Okay. I'm just trying to find this person. What do they do with corpses in this city? Um. Oh, no. Yeah, there are uh, places where they're magically dis uh, disposed of, so there's no um. And then they would have uh, probably the, those mausoleums that only have the urns to save space. And then they would also, uh, if you were just murdered in the street, you'd just be found in a hole somewhere. You know, that's always an option. Oh, how the fuck can I can't find that guy? That's annoying. So what you'd expect. All right. Uh... Okay, so um, anyways, so the person that you were trying to find, my apologies, the uh, the name I took a minute to find. You have to go uh... through like old note pages. Yep. Uh, it's uh, Nesfan, um, Kalkorin, and it's a gnome. Uh, Who knows them? Corn. Um, so this was the contact that actually, so when you guys were over in the uh, the island still, they were like, oh, I have a contact. I actually know somebody that happens to work for Morgrave University. And I'll, I'll set you up with that contact when you head back that way. This happened several sessions ago. And so that's their name. Uh, if you want to write that down, our Nesfan Kalkorin. So um, this is the person that you're going to want to uh, try and meet with. Uh, they are not, they are one of the curators, but certainly not the lead of, the, uh, of, of this place. So making your way to that place... Oh, wait, no. Ha, huh, I found... No, 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 that's correct. It's Lathias is a different person. Okay. So uh, it's it's uh, Nelfas. So uh, Nesfan. Nesfan. So you make your way to the um, uh, Morgrave University. And it's one of those things where as the... Uh, because you got a decent um, Orion shuttle to bring you there. Uh, as it lands on the platform, nobody thinks anything of it. So you're people that uh, are showing up like you have wealth. And when you step out, you look like adventurers. I mean... It's, you don't seem foreign at all to them. Adventures come all the time from Zendrick and the like. And the fact that you smell of the sea, once again, is 100% normal. Uh, people come from Zendrick all the time to bring uh, ancient uh, artifacts from the giants, uh, lost lands from the drow and whatnot to be brought back here and studied and so on and so forth. So as you guys land on this platform and we're walking out, people don't really pay you two minds whatsoever. Um, nobody cares. If they recognize you, they don't care at all. You make your way into the actual university, and it's because the platform that you were brought to, because obviously the person transporting here knew where to go. It's kind of like if you drop off at an airport, they know the, the, the cab knows where they're going. Um, you go walking into the actual front area, and this place is, is actually very large. So when you first go walking in, um, you can clearly tell that Civis has had an impact on this along the way, because uh, when you first go in, there's a semicircle that has five uh, different people sitting at desks, uh, all diligently working on paperwork. Um, three of them are human, one of them is a half-elf, one of them is a gnome. None of them seem to be marks, none of them have house symbols, all of them are wearing the typical colors of the Morgrave University. And so you go walking in, and it's kind of one of those, you stand in a very small line um, to be able to get up there, wait only a couple minutes, before finally you go in. The people, the person immediately ahead of you, uh, they're talking about the various uh, bits of stuff that they had found of significance, and you can actually tell that the uh, person that's overlooking the items 
um, she's actually talented at what she's looking at because he pulls it and he's like, oh yeah, all right, I found this stuff right here. And he starts like laying, naming all these different amazing places where he found all these incredible artifacts. And so she's looking through it. She's like, no, that's a dragon tooth. No, that's a, this is a spoon. This is literally a spoon. And, and, and it, it eventually kind of going through the thing, she's like, no, now this, however, huh, look at that. I mean, it's not much. It's a small shard of metal broken off of, looks like it might have been breastplate. We might have something here. Um, uh, what was your name again? And she jots it down and she, uh, a brief description of the item. And What was his person, name? That, that person's name? Yeah, the person in front of us. Do you care? Yeah, because I have high intelligence and I keep track of these things. Sure. Uh, his name... We never know when we might need a mook. Okay. So uh, his name is Rogel uh, Inam. Thanks. And uh, so Rogel Inam uh, is like, oh, yes, they did that. I found... And she's just kind of like waves away like, okay, I'm, I'm done listening to your stories. Uh, puts like a number, like sealed uh, uh, pouch that it's on uh, and then ends up writing it down in the book. Puts it away and says, we'll be in contact with you. And then uh, after he uh, goes off, she has like one of those lingering looks at him as he goes and looks up to you and it's almost like a face reset. Pleasant face. Oh, hello and welcome. Please come up. Um, <clears throat> how is it that may uh, assist you today? She says you guys kind of like shuffle up and don't say anything. I would definitely like push Reich forward a bit more. It's he's the one who's here. Salvo would happily lead, but it's, it's his shit. So when he does that, I I, I, I kind of you know brush myself off quickly and I say, uh, yes, I have uh, I've come, given your expertise in the matter of the Dakani Empire, I've brought what I believe to be several relics of the. Um... She stifles a small yawn. I brought what I believe to be several important relics that might be of interest to, uh, interest to you, and I would like to know more of them. We are here to see Nesvan Kalthurin about the ancient Dakani Empire. We have relics of ancient portent and magical purpose. Wonderful. Um, she says, and again, it's just one of those very trained responses. She's like, wonderful. Now, if you could please take the uh, the artifacts and if you could display them on the uh, counter before me, I will begin uh, looking This counter isn't display. big enough. Oh, you can see like sort of those like, oh, one of those people. She's like, then if you'd like to take a minute or two to look over the uh, most prized items uh, that you have and lay five or six of them before me so I can look through them and, and then we will direct you to a, the appropriate room afterwards to look through the rest of them and see what we can find. Don't I do will it, just Karen. take these back holding and dump it out on the table. She's literally... <laughs> With the coins. <laughs> As you can see, those are ancient Dakani <laughs> coins, and they're just part of the equation. So we're talking, the, is this just the coins? I don't know, it's one of the bags. It's, it's all of the the hoard. <laughs> so at and first, I just coins just seems, object. at first she's surprised and annoyed, but then uh, like it just keeps going <laughs> and keeps going. And she's like, okay, I get it. Your adventures of some notes. You have some coin here that's... These are Dakani, uh, Dakani coins. These not... are Dakani coins. I'm sorry, have we stopped boring you? You have ears, I can see them. She picks up another one. She picks up a handful more and like looks down at her handful and sees that they're all a similar mint. She's I'd like, recommend looking with your eyes, not your hands. Uh, excuse me, one second. She says like ignoring you. She put, puts them all down, it holds the one, goes and gets a loop, you know, starts looking at them with that, looking at the like etchings of whatnot in it. And she's just like, um, Margaret? Margaret, I'm gonna need, um, uh, yes, uh, and, and Tylon, I'm gonna need some help over here, please. And you see two people just kind of like, excuse me, and get up from their desks and come over, and it's the, uh, the ha half elf and it's the, um, gnome make their way over, and they start, so what is it? She's like, you know, just hands the coin in the loop to one of them, and, uh, and they start looking at it, and they're like, are you shitting me? That is, that is long out of, are these all? And, and so they start like looking through the coins and they're just like uh, surprised by uh, how old they are and everything. They're like, um, I'm 
terribly sorry to, to be a nuisance to you, uh, says the, the woman you imagine is Margaret, uh, making way over this is a half-elf. I'm terribly sorry to be a nuisance to you. Um, we're going to have to ask that you please um, pick these back up and place them inside your um, your device there. Uh, we're going to have to bring you to a different room so they can be looked at a little bit more closely. Uh, I'd be more than happy to assist you, she says, like reaching out but not touching any of the coins, kind of waiting for permission. Yeah, and I'll start doing it too. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the table. Glaring, glaring at the, uh, I say, you know, sometimes being impressive does not, <laughs> is not itself proven. It was absolutely worth it. <laughs> and I continued up. And, and I say to you, uh, it's these, and I say, and the, this is one of the lesser of the artifacts that we found. Uh, they, 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 the one of them, like, looks up, and this is actually the gnome that looks up, it's like, artifacts? Yes artifacts when we go into this other room i will display we'll display to you what we found i'd recommend sending a message to anyone in your staff that researched the decani uh she, and this is actually where she would chime in and be like oh no no you had said that you wanted nest fan we'll we'll contact him immediately he'll he'll be joining us very shortly uh and she's like quickly shuffling things in the entire room you guys realize is very quiet and they're all watching you yeah. You want to go? You want to go? We quite point? literally flashed our cash. And, and, yeah, and we did not do anything here. And keenly aware <laughs> that everybody's armed. Jesus. And I'll fight them all. <laughs> Let's do this. So, so <laughs> very uh, uncouth to fight in the middle of Morgrave University's foyer. Absolutely. But you know, some of you have very unique features that stand out. So. Um, you guys are, are, are piling these things back on and eventually making your way to that room. And with that, why don't we take our first break? And we'll, hey! be, we'll, be, yeah. we'll be right back. Sorry, everybody, see you shortly uh, to find out what happens in that room. Shortly. Bye. Bye.